it's, it's a working estate which has holiday accommodation and a cookery school. That's how I look at it. The history of Belle Isle's first settlement goes back to the 12th century, so there's been people here for a long, long time. The Abercorn family bought it in 1991. Initially, when they first bought it, they realized uh, the potential of, of tourism at Belle Isle. It slowly developed. It wasn't suddenly, whoop, let's have 72 people to stay. It, it's built up slowly and gradually. idea for the cookery school really started with the Duke of Abercorn who owns the estate. Now the idea initially was people to stay in the accommodation on the estate. So if you have a group of people who need somewhere to stay, then it was going to help out that business. In fact, by the time the cookery school was built, it all became quite different because the estate was really taking off on its own and doing very well. So almost now we're at a crossroads where perhaps we need more accommodation. So it's a very happy circumstance, I think. Well, we did a certain amount of research. Um, a lot of the cookery schools concentrated more on the longer one month, two month, three month courses. There were not that many day courses. So we saw certainly an opportunity there. The other thing we discovered was that really there was no cookery school um, north of Dublin offering residential courses. So this was definitely um, a, a, an area that we could concentrate on. Um, and from that it grew um, and by experience we discovered what worked and what didn't work. Trying to get over the, the whole concept of Belle Isle as a working estate um, on 450 acres on an island in Loch Earn, that has a magic of its own. But when people arrive, you've got to experience it and you may uh, uh, use as many websites or photographs as you like, but the actual experience, the smell, uh, the, the, the look and everything else, it, it's terribly important. That is all part of the Belle Isle experience, no matter what you're doing at Belle Isle. And that's what we try and get over. I think the school has become such a success due to um, the personal approach we have to people. By and large they come for what I would describe as modern Irish cooking and you have to, to a certain extent, be all things to all people, which I know is difficult and not altogether possible, but um, somehow with just 14 students we seem to manage that very well. My specialty being more sort of based on oriental courses which we do here which will be India, Thai, China and all that and then we will do the Thai cooking and then we'll do the Chinese cooking. Since I've been here the last two and a half years people are a lot more adventurous because they travel now a lot, go on lots of holidays, go far in a field so they want to come back and being able to cook so yeah it's getting really really popular here. The food is the best thing about this place. I eat so much, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's all so good as laden with butter and cream and then getting to know how to do it so I can repeat it at home for uh, my parents and whoever comes around for dinner. But definitely the food and then meeting all the different people as well that come in. It's just good crack. I enjoy doing the diploma course because you're here for four weeks, you get to know them, you get to know what they like, what they don't like, how they get on, and um, then you get a bit of banter going with them, which is always good fun. So after four weeks, we get to know them quite well. We thought, whoopee, here we have a cookery school, we've got the name Belle Isle, everyone will come pouring in, there'll be no problem. It doesn't work like that at all. You can't just advertise a cookery school and wait for everyone to appear, they won't. We have been successful with television, uh, and it started really with the holiday programme, BBC holiday programme, which was done through Tourism Ireland, and that really got us off the ground, um, and we got a huge response for that. Um, we've been successful in a couple of in-flight magazines, the British Midland in-flight magazine and um, the Ankara, the Aer Lingus magazine. That both have been extremely good. We are members of the Blue Book and Good Food Ireland. And they're the sort of agencies that really actually do sell you abroad, along with Northern Ireland Tourist Board and Tourism Ireland. You, one hasn't got the time or the money to do it all yourself, you have to rely on, on other people. So we do, my wife does a newsletter um, every three months and that updates all these agencies, Tourism Ireland, Northern Ireland Tourism Board, on what's going on at Balao and that works extremely well. 
my personal ethos and also that of uh, the cookery school would be to keep it simple, keep your ingredients good quality, don't mess around too much and certainly when it comes to explaining recipes, explain them concisely with patience um, and a lot of enthusiastic flair really. All that is a very good combination. The quality of the ingredients is paramount. It has to be, I mean, spanking fresh and, and good in every respect. I know that the beef we use grows up uh, three fields away from here and there's not many people that can say that. The qualities I would look for in my staff are happily the qualities that they have. Um, they have to be team workers. Teamwork at Belial is extremely important for the simple reason we had a very small team. So if we don't get on, we'll never get a day's work done ever. And we are very close because we are here. Like the weekend courses, we could be here, you know, from nine in the morning till eleven at night. Very often people would write to us to tell us what they thought of the course and usually it's going to be a good thing, you know, because um, they've really enjoyed it and they, they want to tell us so, which is fantastic. Um, our comment sheets are um, all put onto a computer. Anybody who says, um, you know, we particularly enjoyed this area of the course, that would go into its own file. We ask people for courses they'd be interested in doing in the future, and that goes into a separate file. So we know that if we're running, um, oh, I don't know, a Christmas entertaining course, oh look, we have 40 people who are already interested in doing this. So that if it isn't filling for some reason, we can write to these people and say, Look, we'll give you um, a special offer in this course if you're interested in doing it. And by there's no point collecting data as you go and not utilising it. You get really timid students that you just need to give them a nice warm welcome. You can tell as soon as they come through the door who's outgoing, who's shy um, and who's, who needs a cup of tea and a welcome smile. They say, come on in, it's not that bad. We have no particular level in the school. So you might have somebody who's a very, very able cook, been cooking for years, just looking for a little more inspiration. And they're coming with um, a rather timid person who has never boiled water before. And you know, confidence is terribly important with people. It's not Hell's Kitchen, there's no yelling and shouting. Certainly not done by me or Nassim. Um, and it, it's a very relaxed atmosphere, but it's busy and it's happy. People get on very well with each other. Um, by and large, we're lucky because people who come to cookery schools are a very nice sort of person. And I'm not just saying it, they really are. And if they've nothing else to talk about, they have the food. What they start off is by making bread. And when you have the dough all over the place, flour in your hair and on your shoes and on the floor, uh, it's a barrier breaker. And uh, after that, they're flying. And actually, they'll come back. They do repeat, even the gentlemen. It's not just one aspect, it's not just the cookery school or just fishing or just um, shooting or whatever. It's the whole concept of Belial Estate um, and its environment and its natural beauty.